Hi, it's Lauren here at Craft Some Joy, and I'm so glad you found my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to jump in to another edition of Scrap With Me Times Three, and we are going to use the amazing new Showtime collection from Creative Memory. So if you have this collection and were wondering what to do with it, make sure you stay tuned. Before we jump in, I just want to remind you, if you are in Australia, make sure to check out Kyla Kingham at Paper Sweet Pea for all your creative memories needs. And also, if you are in Canada, hop on over to Noreen Smith at Organized and Creative Mom. I'm going to leave all their shopping links and social links in the description of this video. And when you're done here, make sure to hop over and see what they've done with the great new Showtime collection. So let's jump in and have some fun scrapbooking together. All right, so let's jump in and have some fun with a new technique for a two page spread. And I'm gonna show you how to make a true grid layout for your photos and adding in embellishments and journal boxes and so forth. So what we're gonna do, we're going to use the beautiful new Showtime collection from Creative Memories which is really fun because it has a lot, a lot of embellishments and really cool graphics that we can use in our layout. I'm gonna come back to this because first what I wanna do is share what is a grid layout. So to kind of explain what I mean about a grid layout, I'm going to just demonstrate what I've done to set up this two page spread. So I have a photo folder here and on the left hand side I have the templates that I wanted to use on the left hand page and on the right hand side the templates I want to use on the right hand page. So I'm just going to pull these out and if you're interested in how I made these I do have a video that takes you step by step how to make your own templates and these are good for just kind of giving you an idea of how to lay out a page but they are also really helpful when you want to do a grid layout. Okay, so the main thing to remember when you're doing a grid layout is that everything adds up to 12, right? So as soon as you put something down, as soon as you decide on a, si on a size, everything has to end up adding up to 12. So if the layout that I'm doing here doesn't quite work for your photos, it's just math. All you have to do is figure out how to add things up to 12 so that it works with what you have and your photos, memorabilia, journaling, so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm stacking a 4x3, a 4x4, and a 4x5. Then I have two vertical 4x6 photos, and then I'm going to do a 4x4, another four by six, and a little four by two down here in the bottom corner. Okay, so that's my left-hand page. Now on the right-hand side, what I wanna do is a, a similar but different layout. So I'm going to have a four by four um, up here on the top, and then a six by four underneath that, and then another four by four. And then next to the top row, four by four, I'm gonna have a five by four, just a little smaller than your standard four by six. And then I'm gonna finish that row off with a little three by four space over here. Over here, I'm gonna do a six by four horizontal and then another six by four horizontal. You know how much I love my photos, so that's why I make sure to have a lot of full size area for photos. But when I show you what I've actually done, you'll get to see, you can kind of tweak this a little bit so it works for you. Okay, so then I'm gonna do a four by four, another four by four, and finish it off with a third four by four. So this is the basic layout that I've used for the two pages that I've done. And as I mentioned, I cannot stress enough that um, work on your layout, work on your grid, so that it makes it the best for your photos. Okay, so as I mentioned, I am doing a two-page spread using this beautiful Showtime collection. And when I saw this collection, I thought, 
Oh my gosh, my son's promo party, his eighth grade promo party. I hadn't scrapbooked them yet, but this would be a perfect collection to celebrate his promotion. We did a big party at his school. I had a lot of um, involvement with that and getting the theme organized and set up, and so it was really fun. So I thought, what a better way to showcase this brand new collection. So this is going to go into his album. I use white pages for uh, my kids kind of school years. So again, I've got a photo folder, but now you can see how I took the grid that I just showed you how to set up. And now this is what my page is going to look like. So up here in the left corner, I have a four by three. It's not a photo. Then I have a four by four space, but guess what? My photo is actually a little smaller than the paper behind it. So my photo is a three and a half by three and a half, but the paper, the backing is a four by four. Then I decided to do a journaling box as my four by five right down here. And this again is from the Showtime collection. This was kind of my key photo. I wanted it to be front and center highlighted. So it's a four by six, but I did cut it down so that there was a nice quarter inch all the way around so you could see and highlight that photo. Then uh, underneath that, we have the silly uh, adventures of promo party. And then I have uh, so I have the two four by six. So you can see this is a full four, four by six photo. And this is one that's matted. I have another four by four photo up here. Then I have a four by six. And you can see on this one, I left it in a very simple format. I kind of pulled that color across, but also I didn't want everything to feel busy and filled up. So I kind of kept this in a little simpler design. And then this little space down here, I did a four by two size and I added some more embellishments and a sticker. So you can see how I've taken that grid layout and created a whole filled 12 by 12 page with those sizes. It's kind of fun. Okay, so let's do the right hand side. And this one also has a lot of the four by fours. So it starts here. I'm going to just the top, the ones on the bottom are on the top. So I'm just going to lay those down. These are all four by fours. And you can see I've actually once again taken the photo, made it a little smaller, but kept it in that four by four format. So you kind of have this really neat, it's almost like putting together a puzzle. And I kind of think that's fun. Okay, so I have uh, a four by three, or a three by four actually that goes up here. And oops, hoping these are not getting stuck together. And then I have my five by four photo, which worked perfectly because I needed to trim that photo down and then another four by four that goes on top. And you can see for the embellishments, I actually mirrored these two uh, four by four sections. And these photos here are cut down to a four by three. So I have an inch to play with for the decoration. Okay, and then in the center, I have again another very key photo because it's with mom and dad, of course, and another four, four by six. So you can see in this layout, I wanted to highlight a couple photos. And so those two were the one of just him by his name and also with mom and dad. And then the rest are just kind of the setup, what it looks like, and then photos with friends. Parents were not allowed, once the party started, parents were not allowed to go uh, to the party. They purposely did that so that the kids felt like they could be free, be themselves, and have a good time. Okay, so there's where we're headed. Now, let's kind of talk a little bit about how I got here and, and give you some of the tips on how I put these different sections together.
Okay, so now let's get into the details of exactly how to put these two pages together and do some cutting and building of the pages. So for this layout, this is a double page layout, I am using five different sheets of paper. I'm using the Lights Camera Action paper, the Sequins paper, the Blue Balloon paper, the Gold, which uh, is the shimmer paper that came in the shimmer cardstock sampler that goes along with this collection and also the blue diamond or arrow paper and that has the kind of fireworks design on the back okay so these are the four papers that i'm using and then of course we're going to need stickers embellishments also some journaling cards You'll need to pick a few of those out for your layout. And as for tools, we're going to need our 12 inch trimmer, our personal trimmer, uh, adhesive, foam squares, multi-purpose tool, the border maker system with the new double fan punch. And also uh, I'm going to have you use the new champagne toast punch because I am in love with these little star punch outs that come out along with the champagne glasses. Okay, so that's what we'll need. Gather your supplies if you want to do this along with me and let's get started with cutting. So you might be asking, Lauren, why does it matter to do a grid layout or why should I do a grid layout rather than just sticking my photos on top of my pages? And I don't really have a good answer for you. It's just a technique. This is just another fun way to build pages. But the one thing I can say is that it does really save you on paper. So if you like that idea, this really does have a minimal use of paper. When you see exactly what we're cutting, you fill up the entire page with just a few pieces of paper. Okay, so let's first start with this blue arrow paper and we're gonna cut this at the four inch mark. Okay, right here. And uh, we do need to pay attention to the direction of the arrows. So right now I have the arrows pointing up and just make sure you pay attention to that on your paper. So I'm gonna cut that at the four inch mark and then I'm gonna turn and I'm going to cut two four by sixes. Okay, so basically I'm cutting that in half right there at the six and we have a four by six and a four by six let me set that aside again with the arrows facing up i'm going to take this paper and now i'm going to move it over to the six inch mark right here and so this is the one piece of paper that you actually use almost the entire sheet but this is extra so you can set that aside now i'm going to take this six inch strip turn it and we're going to cut a six by four in a horizontal format okay so now we have a horizontal format six by four and now what we're going to do is trim this down this last piece now that we have our six inch mark our six inch format i'm going to trim this piece down to four inches and that is again extra and now i'm going to turn this and this is going to become a four by four just like this and a two by four just like this and the reason we kind of do it this way once again is so that all the pattern is facing the same direction if that makes sense okay so that last little piece is also an extra or you may end up using it in your layout okay the next paper let's do the lights camera action paper this one we're going to cut again at four inches first okay four inches this whole rest of the paper is extra you can tuck that back in your collection we're going to take our four inch strip turn it and we're going to make a four by three section here and then we're actually going to do 
uh, so that one we're going to save on the right hand side. Then what we need, we need a horizontal format and then now we also need that same dimension but we need it a vertical format. So what I'm, the best way to do that is we're going to cut another four inch strip, another at the four inch mark and this is extra so put that in your extra pile and now we're going to turn this and just cut that one inch strip off. So this will become a three by four high. Okay. So basically what I've done is I have the words one going horizontal and the words one going vertical, but they are the exact same size. Okay, next let's do our sequins. Actually, let's do, <laughs> we're gonna do our border maker cartridge on that. So let's pop over to the balloon paper. And this one is a really easy one. We're gonna cut it at four inches for our balloon paper. This whole rest of this is extra, so you can tuck that back into your collection. And we're gonna make three four by four squares with this paper. Okay, so we have one, two, and now three. Okay, so we're gonna need all three of those. Now let's jump into the sequence paper. We're gonna cut this at four inches also right here and you can decide which side of the paper you like better totally up to you but we're going to cut that four inch strip all the rest of this hang on to it for a second because we're going to use the border maker cartridge but we will turn the sequence paper and we're going to cut a four by four square here and we are going to cut a four by two just that little bit. And actually, I kind of like this bit of bright sparkle, so I'm going to use that. And that's going to be my little four by two piece. The rest of this is also extra. So now let's put our trimmer away and we are going to get out our border maker system. And we just need to do two, two punches with the double fan. Oh, here we go. It's all falling down. Okay, so let's get our border maker set up. We'll start with the sequence paper. Pop that in there. Okay, and we're gonna punch one row out of your sequence paper. And we're going to set that aside. And the rest of this paper is extra. And now we're going to do the same thing for the gold shimmer paper. Pop this in. Okay. And Let's make our row of gold double fans. This looks so pretty with the gold shimmer paper. This design is stunning. <laughs> I hope you all give it a try out of the shimmer paper. I mean, it's just beautiful with this uh, double fan design. All right, so let's set that over on the side and you've got a whole lot of gold paper left over for your collection as well. Okay, so that is what we need from our gold paper. Actually, we will probably come back or we can just do it now since we have the gold paper out. I do wanna give, give a few punches for the champagne toast punch since I have it out. And I do love those little stars. So for this, I'm just gonna punch a few. I'm going to go down this way instead of across. And I'm just going to punch four times. That's all I need. 
And uh, what I ended up doing, since I'm not this eighth grade promo party, right? I'm not going to be using the champagne glasses for this layout. So I just tucked those. Oh, this got stuck in there. I just tucked those in with my collection in my Power Project folder, or you could um, tuck them away with your embellishments. So let's just grab those cute little stars and set those aside. And as I mentioned, we'll just use the champagne glasses for another project. But so pretty, again, just having these little um, stars to play around with. And oh, look at a whole little pile of champagne glasses. <laughs> okay, so now that we have all our paper cut, let's see how this compiles itself into these two pages. And remember, this also relies on photos to complete the layout. So I've got just my templates here to kind of hold those places where you might add photos. So let's get started. We're going to put the four by two down here in the corner. We've got the four by six and then a four by four. So this could be a photo or it could be a journal box. So again, all up to you and what works for your layout. I have a four by six photo here, a full size, and then I have the four by six uh, paper that fits right here. And so I actually cut my photo, as I mentioned, I cut this down to a three and a half by a five and a half. Okay, so this this photo, it gives that nice edge so you can see the four by six underneath it. And the same here, this one is trimmed down to a three and a half by three and a half on a four by four mat. Okay, so we have that set up and then we have our uh, lights camera action up here. And for me, you know, I, in my layouts, I really like to pay attention to where my eye is drawn, and I always want that to go first to the photos. So when I first put this down, I love all the icons and everything, but my eye kept going straight to that paper. So in order to kind of tone it down just a little bit, I added the um, little blue piece of blue and that also gave me a home to add embellishments and this is one of the first places I also wanted to use the double fan chain border cartridge so what this is going to do is just sit right behind that four by four paper and so I'm just going to take my scissors you could use your trimmer, whatever works best for you, and snip this apart and have that just as a little layering piece for this top corner. Okay, next we've got the balloon paper. So again, switching up patterns, but keeping the color consistent. That was kind of my goal because there's a lot going on with the embellishments and some of the decorative paper in this collection. This last bottom -ish, uh, corner, again, that's where we're gonna put a journal box. So we could grab our, this is a four and a half by six and a half journal box. So I'm just gonna cut this down a bit and we're gonna take this to a four inch wide. So the, the journal box that I used on my layout, this was already a four by six. And so I just had to cut one inch off the bottom. I'm just gonna show you how you can do it for another journal box here. And then this looks like we have five inches top to bottom. So this is gonna go all the way to the top of the grid and then to the bottom of the grid to make that journal box, okay? So you can see other ways, other ways of uh, trimming those down. And these are also nice little pieces that if you wanted to add in, you could add in those trimmed off pieces. Okay, so this is one of our first 
the first side. Let's get the other side and then we'll play with some of the embellishments. I'm gonna just move my little stars over here. Okay, and get some of these little extra pieces out of the way. Okay, so the left-hand side is where we are going to, just getting my page set up so we can have a road map where we're going. We're going to use some balloons up in the top corner and some balloons in the bottom corner. And then right here is where we have that four by six horizontal format with the arrow paper. And again, I would cut my photo down so that it fits on top of that space. But then next to that, I have a six by four photo. So I'm just gonna set that in here. In the bottom corner, I have that sequins, whichever direction you like it to see. And then I have the other four by four with the arrow paper. And then up in this corner, bringing over the lights camera action that I had in the other corner and another photo. So let me find that five by four photo is what fits in that spot. So if you would rather keep a six by four photo, you could always take this down to a three by four also, and then keep another six by four. Okay, so just another little addition we're going to add to a couple places is some layers with, again, this beautiful double fan. So I'm just gonna snip these apart and this is gonna be kind of a shadow layer on this uh, square. And so we're, we're just cutting four, four fans apart. And I love how these look together, the fan and the sequins paper. So I'm just gonna clip these apart also. Okay. And then tuck that right behind. So, Again, a couple choices. You can add a three by four photo, which is what I put down here, two three by four photos. You could do a three by three photo, whatever works for you and your layout. But these again are just a little bit of extra kind of layering pieces that you can add in there. All right, so now that we have kind of this basic layout, uh, you know, that's when you bring in your photos, get those set, and then I would come back and add in those embellishments and stickers. And boy, do we have a lot to choose from. So I showed you in the beginning my pages that had um, a lot of these picked out, but you know, there are so many left that there are, there are just, numerous ways that you could add in some embellishments and features to your layout. So if you wanna add balloons, there's just a whole bunch of balloons. I love the balloons kind of up in this corner. You could add in the blue balloons, even layer another set of balloons on top. Uh, there's lots of stars, so many stars. And this is one place that I did add, oh, there's my other little champagne glasses. You can add some stars in here. Ah, having these fans stick here. And I, I used, again, this piece, this corner in my layout more as kind of a grounding square without a whole lot going on to it. And that's actually where I added in these fun little punch out stars. So you can see we can just add a few of those in. And let's see what else. Oh, the music notes are really fun to add in. So you can see I have not even broken into a second embellishment pack from the original ones that I opened and I already have quite a bit to do 
yet another two page spread. But I'm just gonna kind of remind you how I had this set up for my two pages in here. And you can see how we're doing kind of the same thing, just filling in some of that, those areas that won't have photos with uh, some embellishments, okay? So let's find something for up here. This would be a fun place, even if you wanted to do friends or if you wanted to do party, since we've got the balloons. These are just, I love the felt um, embellishments. That's just so, they're so new and fun to work with. It just, just a new little thing. Okay, this one, again, this is bringing that felt up. So look at that, that's really cute right there. Bringing some celebration over there and let's see if we wanted to add some more fireworks in this corner that would be fun to kind of help pop up the celebrate we could do that uh oh this one's a really fun one too maybe we i don't know <laughs> we could put that wherever um we could put this down here or i know there's another um music notes so many music notes that are fun in this collection can add that down here in this corner too right so that just I hope gives you an idea of placement of where you can cluster some of these um, embellishments different places Again, you can use this as a journaling box, but if you have more to say, you could always switch out one of these for journaling boxes as well. So I think it's just kind of fun sometimes to think about grids and think about the math behind the layouts and do something a little different. So I would love to give you a challenge. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna try this and if you liked this type of layout, it's a little different, something fun, something different to try. And of course, you can move it all around and, and make this your own. I hope you enjoyed this session of Scrap With Me times three. And don't forget to check out my buddies Noreen Smith at Organized and Creative Mom and Kylie Kingham at Paper Sweet Pea. They have some wonderful YouTube channels and social content and all of their shopping links will be listed in the description of this video. And don't forget to grab your free downloadable insert for a notebook to keep all of our handouts handy that are available on each of our websites and you can keep them all together in one place in your notebook. So thanks once again for joining me in this fun new layout and we will see you next time when it's time to scrap with me times three. See you soon. Bye for now.